Father Davenport, thank God. I'm afraid it's gotten worse. Please, come in. Hey there, welcome to the Quantum Leap podcast. Uh, we're very excited today to be bringing you an interview with Elise Levesque. Elise, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Now, we've just seen Elise in the latest episode, O Ye of Little Faith. Uh, so we're going to talk a lot a bit about that and, um, and also uh, some of Elise's other work. Uh, perhaps we could just start by going back to the beginning briefly, because you've been acting since you were very young. So can you tell me a little bit about how you got started? Yeah, so I guess I've been doing this, gosh, I don't want to do the math necessarily, but I started when I was 11, and I'm 37, so I'll leave that up to you. Um, I am from a very small city in Canada that used to have a pretty uh, budding film industry, um, and one day, my grade six teacher, Miss Krause, shout out to Miss Krause, um, came up to me and was like, there's an open call for this kid's uh, television series that's shooting in town and I really think you should go and audition for it and I think she thought I'd be good for it because whenever there was an assignment in class I always like if it was like you can do a presentation or you could write a story or whatever I always like filmed something like made the other members of the group act it out um, so I was obviously very sort of drawn toward that um, to acting and performing so, um, so she was sort of the person who ushered me in that direction. And I remember I almost, I almost didn't go. And then my mom was like, you know, like, whatever, let's just go. Let's just see what happens. Worst thing, you just go, you have an experience, like whatever. And it was so not a traditional audition. Cause usually like when audition, you get sides, you go in and you read, this was like a sit down interview. Um, with this casting director, Jackie Lind, who casts a bunch of stuff in Canada. And all she did for like 10 minutes was just ask me questions. And I remember one of the questions she asked me was, if you could go on a date with anyone, who would it be and where would you go? And I said, Leonardo DiCaprio, and we would go to McDonald's. And I guess that was like a good enough response because then I got a call back <laughs> and had to actually read something. And then um, I made it into this like repertory company of like 40 some local kids that they would use to cast in these little sort of vignettes. Um, the show was a series of short stories written by kids that then screenwriters took and turned into screenplays. Um, so it was a really formative experience and a, a really good training ground because they taught us because pretty much none of these kids had any experience being on a set. So they had like a two week workshop where they taught us like, you know, how the terminology, what you can kind of expect on a set. We did some acting exercises and um, yeah, it was a really good sort of beginning. And then I remember on like the first day that my mom, my mom came to pick me up after my first day of filming. And I was like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. So at 11, I was like, I found my thing. It's Amazing. Cool. And a, a through line straight from there, because I know sometimes child actors have a few years and then think, you know, I've done that. It's not for me. But for you, it's just straight on. Pretty, pretty much. I mean, I, I, yeah, I worked on a few other shows as a kid, as a teenager. And when I graduated high school, I was supposed to go do the third season of this show in another province. And it was all set up and ready to go. So I didn't sign up for university because um, I was going to be filming into the beginning of the school year. And, um, and then fortunately, unfortunately, it got canceled um, before we even started filming the third season. And so I was sort of like left with this moment of what do I do? I, you know, I can't get into university right now. Like I missed the window. I don't know what I would even want to study um, is acting what I want to do with the rest of my life? I don't know. Um, and then I, I had an opportunity to do some modeling. So I, I started doing that and I did that for about two years, traveled to Asia and Europe. It was a really amazing experience. Um, and I think it actually gave me the confidence to then be sure of what I wanted to do, which was acting. So when I got back to Canada after two years of traveling, 
I very briefly went to school, you know, just something to sort of occupy myself and also like was working a part-time job to save money so that I could move to Vancouver and pursue acting full-time. That was like 2006. So, so pretty, pretty steady since then. Yeah. Great. Should we, um, let's jump ahead to Quantum Leap and then I think uh, we'll probably um, take some steps backwards afterwards. So um, could you maybe just talk me through the audition process for Quantum Leap or how you, how you became involved in it? Well, the whole world now is self-tapes because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it was just another tape that I did, one that I threw into the void. And I actually auditioned or put myself on tape for the role of Magda, the, the maid. Um, and then I was uh, out of town going to a friend's wedding and I got a phone call um, that I'd booked the part. And I remember thinking, I really don't think I'm right for this part. Like I got that part. Wow. Okay. And then maybe like 30 minutes went by and my agent called me back and he's like, wait, they don't want to book you for the part that you read for. They want to book you for the part of the mother. And I was like, the mother? Like, wait, what <laughs> character? I don't remember that in the sides. Like, what's the mother? And he's like, I think it's I think it's a better role for you. And then I got the script and I read it and I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, is, this tracks. This is, this is very on brand. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that was it. And then uh, luckily too, just sidebar, I've, I've, I had worked with the director, Chris Grismer, um, before on a show called The Originals. And also very strangely enough, he and I just figured out we're from the same city in Canada. We're both yeah. from a city called Regina. That's how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, so I'd worked with him before and he was familiar with my work and he was the one who was like, I actually think Elise is better for this other part and luckily nobody objected fantastic and then was that quite a, a a quick process from auditioning through to getting that news and then straight in so or were you fast. yeah yes it was so fast i mean that happens often especially with episodic where mm. it's like you put a tape in on a tuesday and by wednesday night you know you've got the job and then you've got your wardrobe fitting because you start on friday like it's usually <laughs> pretty quick i think this was like i found out on a friday and then I was into wardrobe on Tuesday and filming Wednesday. So I had like a little bit of time, but it wasn't a ton. You don't, it's not like months of prep or anything. You pretty much yeah. jump right into it. Yeah. You leap in, you leap right into it. <laughs> and I think from the, the, the way that this episode set up, uh, I guess all, all the actors were there from, from day one throughout the entire shoot. Was that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was interesting because yeah. It, it's like, um, it was kind of a unique experience as a guest star on something, because usually when you're a guest star, you're the only new kid on the block. Mm. And then they've got all these regulars who are there, you know, day in and day out for months. But with this, because Ben is always leaping into these new worlds, you're one of many new kids on the block, which is kind of takes the edge off. So you've got all these people who are sort of in the same boat as you on day one. Like no one knows how it's going to go. You're all trying to like find your footing. Um, and so we actually shot the first scene we shot was with all the characters in this um, storyline, um, which was sort of a nice way to break the ice. Were you excited to uh, work on a Halloween episode? And what, did it feel like a Halloween thing? It, like, it looks like uh, it seems like The Exorcist, like a horror movie. Was it kind of fun doing the horror uh, genre in this uh, episodic TV show? Oh my gosh, 100%. Halloween is my jam. It's my favorite time of year. <laughs> I, I look forward to my monthly watch of The Nightmare Before Christmas um, every October. And um, so, yeah, I was super pumped when I um, got the episode and read that it was Halloween and saw just even the references to um, the sort of Halloween of the 1930s. And they talked about... Um, there was this sort of thing written in the script, the opening scene where Ben lands in the body of this priest and there's all these like kids running around these trick-or-treaters and it was like, Google 1930s Halloween costumes mm -hmm. at your own risk. So I immediately like Googled. I don't know if you guys have seen that stuff. It's terrifying. 
like the <laughs> masks imagine. these kids used to wear. Terrifying. Mm-hmm. It's that is a, a Halloween movie in and of itself. Like someone needs <laughs> to write that. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was super super fun to be filming something like that. And the house we filmed in was so spooky. And we were on the like universal back lot, which is just such a cool place to be like right next to the Jaws um, exhibit. So every so often these like tra- like trains of peep <laughs> tourists would go by and you could see because they had to turn the sound off um, of the, the like because there's like music and everything for that exhibit they had to turn it off so these poor people just had to like silently watch a shark like come out of the water with no sound effects <laughs> and then continue on their way um but anyway all that to say yeah it was it was really fun to do a halloween episode and to know that it's going to air on halloween is also just a real treat uh it being a period piece of the 1930s did you have to prepare any different than you would for other characters like uh kind of get used to the times or maybe like the mannerisms or uh language yeah i i mean yes and no i think i think sometimes it really depends on what time time period you're doing but um i think we all sort of collectively as a cast didn't you do tend to speak in like a different way which is just more enunciate more enunciation more articulation people back then didn't do a lot of ums and uh and you know, like slang and stuff like that. So it's not really in there. So it's sort of inherently in the text already, um, how to speak. So I didn't really feel that I needed to like put too much, like I'm going to talk in a different way. See, like any of that sort of, (laughs) sort of thing, um, which actually would be really, really fun to do. (laughs) But, 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 um, I, yeah, I think, I think there can be this sort of false idea people really only spoke like that on television in real life. People didn't really talk like that. I don't, I mean, I don't think, but from what I, from what I gather. Um, so no, not, not particularly. I mean, I feel like the wardrobe and the set and so much of just the accoutrement of, of the, the, the space, et cetera, just really did so much of that work for us. Um, and then just making sure you're not slurring your words and, and speaking clearly, et cetera, I think is, is just really what I tried to kind of focus on. I'm always really interested with, um, with whether it's scary movies or something like this, a, a, a Halloween episode in an ongoing show, how where the actors are trying so hard to make every beat as terrifying as possible. How do you mm-hmm. take the edge off between shots? What's the atmosphere like on set when the cameras aren't rolling? I mean, you just have to hang around with Raymond and it's, yeah. it's light and funny. Like he's, <laughs> we were it, to the point where sometimes, because you just get so comfortable with each other after a few days of working, it's filmmaking is such an intensely bonding experience that, you start to just, you feel like family after even just a week of working with these people. So we were just like, I remember dying laughing and making jokes, like right as Chris would be like action. And then we'd all have to like (gasps) be scared or like I was emotional a lot of the time. And, um, and so it's, it, it had a pretty light feeling to it. Just sort of the set in and of itself. Like it's a real lovely, playful, um, place to go to work. So, uh, hopefully that didn't get in the way of the jumps and the, I don't think it did. I'm sure it's, it all came together. Great. But, um, but yeah, I've done my fair share of, of horror. And I actually find that those sets tend to be the most fun where people are like making the most jokes, maybe to sort of counter the intensity of like, Oh, you're chained to a bed and like blood's dripping from your eyes. (laughs) <laughs> or whatever the insane thing is that you're doing. Uh, there tends to be a lot of levity on those sets from what I've experienced. We're nerds here at the Quantum Leap Podcast, as lo- and as well as uh, <laughs> most of our listeners, I'm sure, would identify as nerds. So, of course, we uh, while we have you, we got to ask about Stargate Universe. You were such so amazing on that show. Uh, what thank was your experience you. like on that? Yeah, thank I you. I mean, that's a <laughs> lot to 
to mm-hmm. get into. That was like <laughs> two years yeah. of, of, of my young life. Um, it was one of the most special experiences I've had. I've, I feel like I've had like three or four experiences in my career that have been so impactful and um, special and just sort of different from the other experiences. And that was one of them. Um, we like that, the cast of that show, speaking of family, we were so close. We would hang out on the weekends and take trips together, um, and do all kinds of stuff. And, oh, it was such a huge disappointment when we didn't get to come back and finish that story. Hopefully mm-hmm. at some point someone will write something. We'll be able to at least like wrap it up because we're all still floating in stasis pods in outer space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Is there ever any talk between you all of like, maybe one day we'll do it, uh, if, if it comes along? Or, I mean, oh, oh for sure. It... If, if it came along, I know I'm telling you right now, you can hold me to it. I would do it. I would totally <laughs> do it. If, if someone, Brad or Robert were like, we've written like a, a movie to sort of wrap the whole thing up. I totally would mm-hmm. do it. I think David Blue and I have. Mm-hmm talked about that Mm -hmm. a little bit but um but no I think it's probably that thing where you know people have moved on to other things in their life and you never know you never know I know that there was a Stargate movie coming out did it already come Mm -hmm. out or is it being made I can't remember but it didn't have anything to do with yeah Stargate Universe is really one of my favorite shows I I love all of Stargate but uh, Stargate Universe was really special to me and uh, one of the episodes you were in and uh, was one of the best episodes, I think, of television of all time, of any series, is uh, the episode Time. That's one of the episodes that when I think back on that show, I think of filming because we were filming in rain for days. It's that episode, right? Mm-hmm. Where we're in this like mm-hmm. alien planet mm-hmm. and my character gets an alien through the chest. Do you mm-hmm. remember that? Right? Okay, yeah. So funny story. When we, the whole... Uh, regular cast of SGU signed on to the show, we all were only guaranteed the first six episodes. Our contracts were such that they could drop us after the first six episodes. Um, I don't know why. That's like not really a thing that I've heard of happening, but it was part of the deal. So everything's going along great. You know, we're all bonding as a cast. The show's a blast to shoot. Episode six comes along and Brad and Robert did not give any of us a heads up when they sent us the script for that episode. And in that episode, every single one of us dies. (laughs) So we all thought as we were reading, I start reading it and like Chloe died pretty quickly with an alien through the Mm -hmm. chest. And I was like, Oh my God, I've been written off. Oh my God. Like they did this to to mess with us. (laughs) And But then as it was going and everyone was dying and once they killed Rush, the main character, I was like, okay, okay, this is some sort of like prank that they've pulled on us. It ended up obviously still being the episode, but it was one of those like solar flare sort of wormhole things and we're all actually still alive in another universe. Um, But so anyway, that was kind of a nasty little prank that they played on all of us. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Halfway through that episode, I was like, "Well, they're going to have to undo all this because they can't go without half the people," you know. So, yeah, they've killed yeah. their entire main cast. It was very Game <laughs> of Thrones of them. Yeah. <laughs> Back then, they didn't do that kind of thing. So, no, yeah. uh, they didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love that you love that episode. That was such a fun one to film. Yeah, just the whole series is great. The whole series is very watchable, mm-hmm. bingeable. So, I really, I love agree. I ca- uh, like a. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, a, a year or two ago, I did like a Stargate podcast. So, uh, this gentleman was, was doing this thing where he's going back and talking about the episodes and whatnot. And he wanted to interview me about air part one and part two. So I watched them. I hadn't seen the show in 10 years or something. And I watched it and I was like, this was a great show. It holds up like all this time later, the effects hold up, the content holds up, the acting holds up. I was like, yeah, I'm very, very proud to have been a part of that. The franchise. acting and writing were so good. It just yeah, it was I about agree. the people and the characters. So that that's what makes shows great. So 
that's mm -hmm. like how I first became aware of you. And I thought you were amazing in that show. Uh, and then I'm later awesome. on, I was watching the originals. Can you tell us a little bit about the originals? You spoke a little bit about it earlier, but yeah, that was a great yeah, show. Yeah, because I worked with Chris. I worked with Chris on that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. I would say that's one of the other ones that's like a pretty special, um, was a pretty special experience. I got to go film in Atlanta, which I'd never been to before. Just absolutely mm -hmm. loved working out there. I think it's such a great city. Um, and I was so bummed when I got the invitation into the office and was told that I would be dying <laughs> the next mm -hmm. episode because I became very attached to everyone mm -hmm. there and was very welcomed into the, into the fold. And I think that was an interesting job because I didn't know what it was going to turn into for me when I booked it. I thought it was just a guest star. I thought I was just doing mm -hmm. one episode and then I went and I, and then, and then I sort of heard like, well, you're going to be in a couple and then you're going to have this one really prominent episode. And then we don't really know what's going to happen after that. So I sort of prepared myself for like three episodes of, of work on this. And then luckily I think they just liked what was happening with Joseph and I and the chemistry and this dynamic that they, I think, I don't think they had the intention of turning me into sort of one of the villains in the back half of the, of that season, but it just sort of presented itself and they were like, Ooh, this is an interesting opportunity. This is an interesting place to go with this. So, um, so I ended up getting to play on it a lot longer than I thought I was going to, which was a pleasant, very pleasant surprise and fun too. I think that might've been like my, first sort of bad guy my first sort of but comp complicated villain uh at least I can't, I can't think if I've done anything before that so that was fun that was fun for me to play awesome I also wanted to ask you about uh your time on the Orville I'm a big fan of the Orville so um that's an interest that's an interesting story I so that was my last in-person audition before everything shut mm -hmm. down um, I think maybe it was like two weeks before the lockdown happened here in Los Angeles. And, um, I, I heard maybe like a day into the lockdown, like you're, you're pinned for this job, but we just don't know. Nobody knows what's going on right now. Anyway, the pandemic unfolded and then November of 2020, as things, as the industry had sort of started to get, you know, going again, my manager was like, Hey, can you do a slate for the Orville? Um, you're still up for that job that you were up for like all of these months mm -hmm. ago. So I, I did a slate, didn't hear it. A slate is, I don't know if you know what that is. It's just where you say like, hi, my name's Elise Levesque. I'm five, nine and I'm based in LA and they pan up and down your body. And yeah. Anyway, um, didn't hear anything for another two months was in Hawaii doing a, a job out there. And then I heard like, oh, uh, it looks like you're going to get that job. Came back to LA, got a phone call to go and get do prosthetics, did prosthetics, didn't know when I was going to be filming or any, like it was <laughs> because of COVID, it just sent so many things, it, like so much was up in the air. Shows were shooting in sort of untraditional ways. Um, to accommodate the possibility of someone getting sick and having to shut down production, et cetera. Um, anyway, so, and then obviously it just aired this past like July or June. Yeah, it wasn't that, that long It was ago, like a yeah. two year, so it was like two <laughs> years almost of this, mm -hmm. this thing that I had gone in an audition for. And it was just a guest star on something. It's not like it was like <laughs> a massive studio film and they had all these like special effects to do and all these things. So that was kind of a, a crazy story and or a crazy uh, experience. Um, and then that was my first time wearing heavy prosthetics. Actually, that's not true. I did. I did wear some pretty crazy prosthetics in a, in a show I did called masters of horror years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 where yeah. I was like, yeah, where I, I got mm -hmm. axed in the head and my face was mm -hmm. split apart. So mm -hmm. the, my eyes were technically like over here. So I was blind <laughs> for a whole day on set while we mm -hmm. shot this sequence. I couldn't, so I had to be oh, led wow. around everywhere. And like <laughs> somebody had to like sit me on the toilet. It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> um, and so um, I was like, at least with this, I can see. 
but then they put those contacts in you and you can't see. Mm -hmm. Those things are insane. I don't know how actors who have to wear those day in and day out, how they do it. Because it took me like 30 minutes for my eyes to adjust to seeing again once they would come out. Um, but anyway, once once I was there and doing the job, it was great. Seth was lovely, super uh, fun and easy to work with. And um, it was such, such an efficient set to be a part of. And to be on, it was pretty, it was pretty surreal actually. Um, yeah, it was a fun, fun job. Is there anything before we start to move towards a wrap up? Um, is there anything about the experience on quantum leap that we've not touched on any, any other stories you'd like to share? <sighs> oh gosh, not off the top of my head. I mean, I know we got into like telling ghost stories and stuff a bit. <laughs> yes, in the theme of like Ooh. Halloween, we were all kind of like sharing little stories and stuff. I wish I could remember some of what what was shared, but that was like a fun little thing that we did. And um, can you remember the ghost story that you shared? Would you be able to I share that with us? So or? many. I have so <laughs> many ghost stories. I I don't even know which one to tell first. If um, I lived in a haunted apartment in Osaka um, when I was there modeling. And I was for like weeks experiencing just weird little things. In the middle of the night, it felt like my bed, something was shaking my bed. And then I had this little portable alarm clock and I would set it every night and put it beside my bed. And every morning I'd wake up and it would be knocked over. I was like, what is going on? It's, it's Japan. Like there's earthquakes. Is that what's happening? Um, and so then I asked my roommate, Linda, I was like, are you, is your bed shaking in the night when you're sleeping? And she was like, no, my bed not, doesn't shake at all. I sleep no problem. And I was like, are you coming over to my side of the room by chance? Like, cause my alarm clock keeps getting knocked over. And then it started to be knocked over and like moved. I went further and further away from the bed. And she was like, no, why would I come to your side? The door is beside my bed. Okay. Weird. Um, so this one night I had to get up really early to go do a job in, um, somewhere outside of actually, sorry, it was, this was Tokyo was where my apartment was haunted, <laughs> not Osaka. <laughs> um, I had to go outside of the city to do a, a, a modeling job. And so what they would do is they would print these long pieces of paper and they would have, you know, this was before iPhones. So they would have the directions in English and in Japanese. So if you got lost, you could like show somebody, maybe they'd help you. So I had this like pretty sizable piece of paper. I went to bed at like 9.30 because I had to be up at four, tacked it to the foot of my bed. The other girls, you know, I think I lived with like three other girls. They were all awake and in the living room. I'm laying there on my side and my bed is shaking, doing its usual like shake thing. And I'm like, mm, just another night in Tokyo. And then I start to hear like paper cr crinkling. And I was like, what is that sound? What is that? Roll over, not paying attention to it. The crinkling keeps happening. I sit up, I look up and I swear I'm not picking this up. So it was tacked to the wall and it was like something had it and was pulling it like this, like trying to rip it off the wall. And I just watched for like a few seconds in absolute shock. Like I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then I went, I kind of gasped. I went like, <gasps> and it let go of it and it fell against the wall. And I jumped out of the bed and ran into the living room and was like, oh my God, and crying. And I told the girls what I experienced. And my roommate, Linda, who was like 13, burst into tears. And then this girl, Ludmilla, who was older than us and she had stayed there before, she just very calmly <laughs> turned to me and went, don't you know this place? It's haunted. <laughs> I was like, what? She's like, yes, many other models, wow. they've experienced things here. I was like, what? Um, and then the next night it happened again. So on Monday I went into my agency and I was like, I need to move out. I can't live there. And they, I was like, it's haunted. And they didn't even blink. They were like, oh yeah. We know. Okay. Yeah, we'll move you. I'm like, what? <laughs> so there you go. Do, 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 do. Spooky season stories. Wow. <laughs> Scary. I'm not going to sleep tonight now. Thank you. <laughs> You're so welcome. You're so welcome. I've got lots more where that I came from. I asked for that. <laughs> you, did, you did ask for it. 
<laughs> a, a perfect ghost story for Halloween night. Yeah, Absolutely. there you go. There you go. So we've um, we've talked a lot about the present, about what's uh, what's been happening with Quantum Leap. Um, we've talked about your your past roles. Um, can we look to the future now? Maybe is there anything that you've got coming up that you want to share with us? Any projects ongoing? Not a lot. I've got. I I just did an episode of NCIS, which aired a week ago, um, and then I did um, recently. There's this show up in Canada called Jan, and it's about um, this uh, Canadian musician, Jan Arden. She plays herself. And one of my really good friends um, created the show for Jan. And she, um, they're sort of doing their like end of the show special, which is going to be a Christmas special. And so um, I was just up in Canada doing that. And it's, it's, a, it's a fun, quirky comedy sort of thing. And I played this very creepy photographer. Um, so that was a fun, challenging little experience. So I don't know when that will be out and I don't know if that will air in the States. I know that you could stream Jan on Hulu. I don't know if that's the case anymore, but, uh, so I've got that coming up. And other than that, just like hustling, trying to do some writing and producing and seeing where I can get some stuff going on that side of things. Fantastic. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, Thanks. in the meantime, Thank you so much for your time, Elise. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me.